Sea of Thieves may be one of the greatest games ever. To fail. Sea of Thieves is an open world MMO, and with those feelings of grandeur, those feelings of the unknown, exploring, fighting, and leveling usually comes with some sort of loot system, a power system, a progression system, something. Sea of Thieves has none of that, at least not in the sense we are accustomed to. This lack of an actual progression system in today's modern gaming culture is a bold move. In fact, it's something that should be congratulated. In the era of loot boxes, pay to win, pay to play, cosmetic cluster of madness we are currently living in, one company is trying to bring back casual gaming. It's a bold choice, but it may be the wrong one. Sea of Thieves is made by Rare. Rare was, Rare is, a company that has brought us so many great games that I could literally fill this entire video with just talking about them. In fact, while researching this video, I found that Rare goes back a lot farther than I originally thought to believe. Battletoads, Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, Jet Force Gemini, Killer Instinct, Goldeneye, 007. This list goes on and on. Between 1990 and 2004, Rare as a video game developer was on top of the world, and everything they touched turned to gold. But around 2004, something happened. Rare stopped being the golden boy, they stopped developing their own games, they were all contracted out to make games for other companies, and every single one of them was lackluster at best. Games you never knew Rare were even a part of. A company that brought you Donkey Kong was now bringing you Connect Sports and Jetpack Refuel. Games you never even heard of, let alone actually play. But this also isn't a video about what happened and why. The socioeconomic path that Rare took that took them from the lead developer of the best games ever to a backseat studio making games you've never played. This is a video about why Rare may be a studio stuck in the past. When Rare was on top of the world, gaming was different as a whole. Gaming was fun, it wasn't competitive, there were no esports, multi-million dollar franchises and teams scouting the best and the brightest in the world. Games were made for fun. Period. That's it. That's all there was to games. There was no real progression system, no loot boxes, no cosmetic sales, nothing. Games were meant to be played and enjoyed, and once you beat them, you moved on to something new. Yes, you may receive a new power move or a new gun, but never were there skill trees and tiers and things to level up, crafting, resource gathering, and everything in between that we see in modern gaming. Sea of Thieves is a pirate game, a pirate game that is unlike anything we have ever seen before. There has never been a pirate game at least to have the potential to be as big as this one can be, ever. Let's take a little closer look at Sea of Thieves and all the things it does right, and why I think it may be a shame that this game might just fail. Never before have you been able to take four friends on a ship and literally live the life of a pirate. Being a captain of your own ship, sailing the seas, and basically doing everything and anything you want. The game is beautiful, with possibly the best water effects I have ever seen. People actually getting dizzy and feeling seasick from the rocking and the swaying the waves cause your boat to do. The waves breaking over the bow of your ship and splashing onto your deck are amazing. Storms that make you lose control of your ship all the while trying not to be struck by lightning or crash into the rocks that will only add holes into your already damaged ship. The graphics are the timeless cartoon type that look amazing now and will still look great 10 years from now. Classic, clean, crisp graphics in an ever-expanding water world that is seriously huge. The game looks and plays great, acting and reacting like everything you may want from a game where you are actually a pirate. And as a pirate, your main goal is to become rich and powerful. And you can do that, at least the latter part. With three merchants upon release to obtain quests from, they send you out into an expansive ocean to fetch them chests, livestock, and trinkets, all to be brought back and turned in so you may increase your level and get more advanced quests and bigger rewards. Skeleton forts with over 150 skeletons to defeat, other pirates, storms, and eventually a kraken all keep you on your toes and make sure you are always paying attention. Little details like you not being able to see where you're going while captaining because the enormous sail is purposely in your way so you have to rely on one of your shipmates keeps the sailing fun and interactive. 
Fighting a skeleton lord and simultaneously defending your treasure from another crew of pirates is probably the most fun I've had in the game. Kiting 15 skeletons around while your team barrages them from your ship with cannonballs only to spawn another 15 skeletons, your ammo running low, you're out of bananas, this world version of a health kit, and finally you kill the leader to access the vault and claim your treasure, only to be shot in the back by another team that was just waiting in the wind to steal all of your hard work. This happened. Nowhere, and I mean nowhere in this game, is safe. You can be killed, robbed, and mugged one foot in front of a merchant on an outpost and have everything, and I mean everything, you worked for, your ship included, stolen from you and sunk. All of this is great and fun and engaging. None of what I described is what I think the vast majority of people will actually have a problem with. What I think may cause this game to fail is the lack of any real progression system. And remember, this is a beta that we played, so maybe, just maybe, not everything has been released, but from what we have been able to play, the feeling of progressing in this game is lackluster. Like I said, in this era of gaming we're living in, making a game strictly for casual gamers is a bold move. Insanely bold. And I think, personally, it may just backfire. When the beta was first announced, Sea of Thieves had 269,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch. Everyone you could think of was playing it. These numbers are important, and we will come back to them in a little bit, but first let's talk about why catering to the casual gamer in this day and age is almost unheard of. People want, no, they need to be the best in video games, or at least try to be. That is one of the main reasons why loot boxes themselves work so well. They feed on the ego, always selling you a dream and almost always coming up just a little bit short. You want to feel like a god in video games. You want to have fun. You want all the time you poured into a video game to make you feel powerful. You want to feel like a king. It didn't always used to be like this. It didn't. Games used to just be fun. However, games today don't follow this same model, and it's nothing about the gamer, him or herself, it's just the culture we live in. You don't even notice these things anymore until they're gone. From the perk system of Call of Duty to the ever-expanding skill trees in Path of Exile, the vast tundras of World of Warcraft where one day you have problems doing the easiest instances only to come back 30 days later and solo it to loot boxes of Star Wars Battlefront 2, giving you the promise of the best stuff in the game. Culture today is being the best you can be in a video game, proving that all the time you sunk into a game was well worth it, and you become that powerful godlike character at the end, able to run around and do what you want, when you want, how you want. Sea of Thieves has none of this, and they are sticking to it. Sea of Thieves has cosmetics. Cosmetics for your ship, for your character, for your gun, for your sword, for your compass, for your shovel, and that's really it. As far as this final beta is concerned, that's all there is to it. You do quests to gain rep and gold to unlock new and cooler looking gear to customize your character to however you may want him or her to look, but that's it. Which also means your dream of becoming a pirate king are kind of simultaneously dashed as well. Because since you may have bought the most expensive skin for your blunderbuss the shop may have to offer, it's still the same blunderbuss that a brand new player has. It does not have no higher damage, better aim, nothing. Which also means that the same level 1 player may just get lucky and kill you and sail away with all of your hard work. Which honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about either way. Personally, that possibility seems interesting to me. But on the other hand, if I put 200 hours into a game only to be killed by someone that has just started, I might feel a little cheated. And again, that is not the fault of the gamer, that is just the culture we now live in. It's that simple. I'm not sure how much staying power this game may have. How many times can you kill the one enemy type over and over again before it gets boring? How many times can you do fetching quests to gain gold to spend on cosmetic only items before that becomes boring too? Or you have everything in the store? I'm not sure. There is endgame content that hasn't been released, taverns and secret hideaways that only the highest ranked pirates can access, but if they are just more of the same, I feel people will just think, what's the point? Let's get back to those numbers because I think they are important before we wrap up. 269,000 players on February 1st, the first Sea of Thieves beta test. 
This was after a horrible, and I mean horrible, beta launch where three quarters of the game owners could not even gain access and this wasn't fixed for over 18 hours. These numbers looked and were promising. However, I also tried to find the numbers of the previous beta, the last final beta before the game is released, and I couldn't seem to find them anywhere. But I know when I streamed, the Twitch numbers were a fraction of this, sitting around 80,000. This is not good. The final beta compared to the one released on February 1st had the most stuff in the actual game than ever before. More cosmetics, better, bigger storms, skeleton fort raids, and they had really fine-tuned everything to make it run super smooth. But then why were the numbers so comparatively low? Maybe it's the lack of an actual progression system that turned off a lot of gamers that are just used to things like that. How many times can you watch your favorite streamer do the same exact thing over and over again? You can only banter and keep people entertained so long. People in 2018 that are 20 to 24 years old never really play a lot of Rare's older just for fun games. They were brought up on Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, where everything you do is rewarded, and if it isn't, why do it, when you can be rewarded for doing something else instead? Everything in those games takes a lot of time, and this game is no different. Sailing around the map, getting chests, and bringing them back to Outpost does take a ton of time. And I know I have said it myself, why even bother to do something? I don't need anything from it. Sea of Thieves is a casual game, and it's like hard right casual. Rare is sticking to their guns and keeping it real simple. Jumping in with four of your friends to cause mayhem on the seas has never been done before, at least not done this well, and Sea of Thieves definitely does that great. The game at times is a lot of fun, especially while doing certain events, and who knows what they may add in the future. But will it be enough if Rare chooses to leave out anything to actually work for, or not make the gameplay varied enough, will it have enough meat on its bones to actually get into? I hope I'm wrong, because if I am, that means gaming as a culture is changing. No longer are we looking for things to grind for, buy with real world money and exploit. If Sea of Thieves succeeds, and I hope it does, it will send a message to developers that we are sick and tired of buying into their predatory money making schemes and that we, as a consumer, just want to enjoy ourselves and have a few laughs with friends. But I'm not sure we are ready to make that commitment. Gaming is an ever-evolving, always changing, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse system. Rare, in its prime, was the best it could possibly be. But maybe that era of gaming has come and gone. Thanks for watching this video. I, for one, am really excited for this game, even though what I said I hold to be true. I also need a break from the constant grind of today's games. I'm going to be covering this game, bringing guides, theories, and playthroughs onto this channel. If you're new, please hit that like button and maybe subscribe. Now it's your turn. What do you guys think of the current state of progression in modern gaming culture? Do you think a game that caters strictly to the casual gamer has a place in today's market of loot boxes, heavy progression, skill trees, grinding, and predatory monetization tactics? Have you played Sea of Thieves? Do you have any of the same fears I do? Let me know down in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.